for today, I just want to encourage each one of us to aim at doing better for ourselves in this year. And the thoughts I will share are premised on the words of wisdom uh, from the Word of God. My message is simply titled, Let's Do Better This Year. Let's do better this year. Why don't you tell yourself, I'll do better this year? Are you sure? Do you intend to? All right, we have to make sure we do better this year. And what I will share uh, with you today is premised on the writings from the book of Ecclesiastes and chapter 7 and verse number 10. And uh, I will read that because that is the premise on which I am preaching my message today. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, uh, chapter 7, verse 10. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. It is a message of rebuke. And, and the passage in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes uh, with the book of Proverbs are wisdom books in the Bible. And they tell us the, the commonsensical wise ways by which we can live our lives to please God. And this is one of those things that we learn from the book of Ecclesiastes that you don't say, why were the previous years? Why was it better last year? Why was it better uh, 10 years ago? Why was it better 20 years ago? And it says if you, if you make that inquiry, if you ask that question, you are not being wise. It's a nice way of saying you are you're being foolish. That's just the Bible's nice way of saying you are being foolish. You are not being wise. So it says don't make that a question that you ask. Uh, particularly myself, I've, I've never been very fond of the phrase the good old days. You know, sometimes we, we talk about the good old days. And of course, I mean, we can say, uh, we can look at the past and call it the good old days when uh, there was color TV, there was no color TV, there was black and white, good old days when we used to go and stand before people's, uh, behind people's windows to watch television. Uh, I, we can talk about that in terms of how far God has brought us. So if you're saying good old days, to see the progress you've made, then that's fine. You can say it's the good old days. But if you're going saying the good old days to say that the past is present than your present and, 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 your, and your future, that the past is better, then you are saying that your life is not improving. So I don't want to look. Uh, I, I live uh, in the 60s. Uh, and in, in the 70s and the 80s, I don't want to look at life in the 60s and say, oh, the statistics, oh, the good old days, it was better. Oh, the days of Kwame Nkrumah were better. Oh, the days of the, oh, the 70s were the greatest days. If you say the 70s were the greatest years of your life, it, you are trying to say that your life has stagnated. You haven't made progress. But God designed our lives to make progress so that our best years are always ahead of us. I said our best years are always ahead of us. You may have had some great years in the past, but what you are in now is better than your past, and what you're going to go in is greater than what you are in. Somebody say, my best is yet to come. Or say it boldly with confidence, say, my best is yet to come. Don't stop your life on yesterday. Don't freeze your life on the past. Don't look back, especially those of you who are a bit older, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, and, and it's so easy when you are in those ages to freeze your life, where your best days are in the past, but the passage in the Bible says that's not how we're supposed to look at life. So I, I just feel that as we begin life, I need to, uh, as we begin the year, I need to just bring a word of encouragement to you that will move you from nostalgia to reality. That will move you from the past to the present. So I'm going to focus on three main things to do if we want to make our lives better in 2024. Three main things we're going to do. The first one 
is that if we want to make 2024 better, then we must know God better. We must know God better. Knowing God better is the foundation for us as Christians. If you were unbelievers, maybe that would not be a priority. But when you are a Christian, this is your priority to know God better. And knowing God better involves so many things. But I'll focus on three actions you must take if you want to know God better. First, to know God better, we must gain better knowledge of the scriptures. We must gain better knowledge of the scriptures. This is so much at the heart of our Christian life. We must know the scriptures better. We must know the scriptures better. And I'm not simply talking about memorizing scripture. Memorizing passages of the Bible, being able to quote the Bible. And it's great to memorize the Bible and to be able to quote the Bible. But that does not mean you know the scriptures. It simply means you know phrases. But what they mean is very important. And knowing the scriptures goes beyond just uh, doing your quiet time in the morning. Uh, read your Bible or even reading through the Bible. Knowing the scriptures is understanding what the scriptures are saying. What is God communicating when I read the Bible? When I read a passage from Leviticus, what is God telling me? When I read a passage from Genesis, what is God telling me? When I read a passage from, from Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, what, what does it mean? How do I manage all the passages in the Bible, the things I understand, the things I don't understand, things that seem to contradict each other? Things that seem to say things that for now doesn't make sense to me. How do I understand them? So understanding the scriptures is very, very critical. And uh, we must endeavor. And this year, I'm hoping that in addition to all the things that we do, that I will be able to really do uh, a session. I will not be doing it on Sunday. I may do it on Tuesdays but I hope to do a series on how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible. I know you all study the Bible, uh, and, and I appreciate your efforts at studying the Bible. But sometimes, you know, it, it's just like me taking a book of physics or chemistry or biology or go and take a medical book I can read the book because I know my alphabets and I know how to pronounce words. So I can read a whole book on, on, from, from a, a doctor's book or, or a lawyer's book. And I can read it and I, I know what the words are saying, but I may have no clue what it is saying. Just because I can read something doesn't mean I understand it. Because every document has rules for interpreting it. If you're a lawyer, you know that. If you're a doctor, you know that. So if a lay person reads those books, they will gain some knowledge, they will gain some understanding, but if somebody guides you to understand particularly how to technically handle the stuff there, you get a better appreciation of it. So uh, to know God better, we have to have a better understanding of the scriptures, and I hope that I can help you with that. In addition to that, we have to understand what God is doing in our lives. Ask yourself, what, what is God doing in my life at this time? Where am I now in my relationship with God? What is God saying to me through my experiences and my encounters? Where does God want me to be? Where is he taking me? What kind of season am I in in my life? Is this a season of preparation or a season of manifestation? Who is God bringing into my life? Who is God taking out of my life? These are important things you have to know because at every point you have to figure out what is God doing in my life? What is God doing? Am I in a, am I in a season where God wants me to be quiet? Or a season where he wants me to shout from the mountaintop? 
Am I at a season where God is preparing me for something great or he has brought me into something great? Because God is always dealing with us at one point or the other. One time you are in the mountain because he's, he's uh, preparing you for the valley. And then next time you are in the valley, he's preparing you for the mountain top. Because life is not mountain top all the time, and life is not valley all the time. Life is not sorrow all the time. It's not laughter all the time. At every point, you have to know what time and what season am I in on God's calendar. What is God doing with me? And what does 2024 mean for me? What is my journey? Where is God taking me? You have to understand what God is doing in your life. And I hope that some of the things I will preach this year will help you to discover what God is doing in your life. You can tell it yourself. And number three, to know God better, we have to experience the Holy Spirit at work in us. Each one of us must have a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. Beyond coming to church and receiving my ministry or any pastor's ministry, you must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm going away, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And he's going to lead you into all truth. Everything we do as Christians is directed by the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. He's the one who does the works through us. He's the miracle worker at work in us. He's the one who hears our prayer because he's the one who recites in us. We have to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The good thing is the Holy Spirit wants to have an encounter with you. So it's not like somebody you want to know and the person doesn't want to know you. You want to know him and he wants to know you too. That's the good thing about the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, it's, it's, it can be very tough if you want to know somebody and the person doesn't want to know you. You call, 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 he doesn't pick up your call. Send text, he doesn't pick up your text. WhatsApp doesn't WhatsApp you back. Then you just know that this person doesn't want a relationship. But the good thing about the Holy Spirit, if you call, call, he'll call, call back. And if you WhatsApp him, he'll WhatsApp you back. All right? He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to guide you. He wants to lead you. He wants to get you to the point where you, don't, you minimize your mistakes in life. All of us make mistakes in life. But the closer you get to the Holy Spirit, the sharper your decision-making process becomes. So your mistakes are minimized. You will make mistakes as a human being, but you, don't, you won't make senseless mistakes. Because the Holy Spirit is your guide, and he's going to guide you, he's going to lead you. So please, you need to experience God's power at work in us through the Holy Spirit. That is knowing God better. And remember at Crossover, and last week I said that we're going to do, a full, uh, we're going to do the next part of our 20-year plan. So we'll do a 10-year plan. Some of the ideas I share, we're going to use them to craft a plan for our lives for the next 10 years of our lives. Second thing that we want to Focus on if we want 2024 to be a better year. Number, uh, number two is build better relationships. Build better relationships. Relationships link us to the experiences of our lives. Almost every experience you have in life is, is, is based on a certain kind of relationship. Good relationships are going to give you good experiences. Bad relationships are going to give you bad experiences. Relationships are the links we build in our lives to connect us to everything that is available to us. So the quality of my relationships will determine the things I have access to and, 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 and the things that are denied me. So we have to invest in building better Relations. So, in three ways we can uh, build better relationships. First is wisely manage my circles of influence. Wisely manage my circles of influence. 
Your circles of influence are determined by the people who occupy different places in your life. Now, if you look at the Old Testament temple, when God gave Moses and later David the plan to build Moses to build a tabernacle, David to build a temple, but the construction was on the same premise. And the, the, the temple and the tabernacle had three circles. There is what they call the outer court, where anybody comes to. The inner court, where the priests go to to make sacrifices. And the innermost court, where the high priest goes. Even in dealing with the temple, God created three circles of influence. The holy of holies, the innermost, the inner, and the outer. The same way with your life. Think of your life as a temple. You yourself as a temple. And you have to determine three levels of relationship. Who is in your outer court? Who is in your inner court? And who is in your innermost court? Your holy of holies. Because if you put the wrong people in the wrong place, you're going to mess up big time. So, for example, your innermost court, your holy of holies, is going to be your spouse and your children. That's it. Your spouse, your children. If you are married, your husband, your wife, your children. If you're going to add anybody to that place, be careful because whoever is in your holy of holies can hurt you. Jesus had his holy of holies, Peter, James, and John. Then he had the rest of the 12. Then he had the masses, his outer court. So you're going to have a few people in your holy of holies. Jesus had three. If you're married, that's your, your spouse is that person. If you marry somebody who cannot be in your holy of holies, then don't marry them. You can't trust them because they are your number they are the one closest to you and your kids. Then your holy place, your very good friends, confidants, mentors, they are in your holy place. They are people whose advice are important to you. The outer court, your work, work colleagues, your schoolmates, buddy, buddy, hey, hi, what's up, what's up, high five, high five people, outer court. Now, the danger is when we bring outer court people to the Holy of Holies. Especially you tell an outer court people, I'm going to tell you something I haven't told anybody. You are crazy. You are crazy. I'm going to share my heart with you. Outer court. He hasn't even come to the inner. It's not in the Holy of Holies, and you're going to share intimate secrets. It will be broadcast to the whole world. And don't be impressed by people who want to push into circles they don't belong to. It's like somebody who sees you and says, I want to be your best friend. Pa. Best friend is not by application or by invitation. <laughs> We know over time, you determine who is your best friend, who can be in your innermost court or inner court. But if somebody is pushing and forcing, forcing, remember, friendship is not by force. It's by choice. So, sometimes you look at who is in my innermost court by accident. Maybe at a time when I was very vulnerable, when I was going through a difficulty and life was hard for me and, and you know, this person, you know, started paying attention to me. So you pour out all your heart to the person. Before you realize the person has become tight. It's like somebody who is in trouble and goes to the beer bar or the bar and just sits down, gets a couple of drinks and drinks, and now he just gets sees somebody for the first time and says, buddy, you are my best friend forever. And, and you're telling him all your life secrets. That's, that's inner court 
by accident because you lost God and you brought them in. But once your eyes open, achiaya, achiaya. <laughs> Because if you bring people close to you who don't belong close to you, you're going to regret your life. You're going to bring pain and sorrow to yourself that is self-inflicted. And you can't blame God for it. Why? Because I've told you. And because it's plain in the Bible. It's plain in the Bible. There is inner court, innermost court. There's inner court, there's outer court. See it in the life of Jesus. So manage your circles of influence. To build better relationship, number two, invest in significant people that God has given to you. God brings people our way. And we have to note that this person has been brought into my life. Some people come into our lives for a season and then move on. And in the season when they are in our lives, they can make significant deposits into our lives. Pay attention to those people. And this year, 2024, pay attention to special people that God makes them cross your path. And maybe all you meet them, you do is meet them for a, a week, two weeks, a month. But within that month, they can significantly make inputs into your life. So pay attention and invest into people God has given to you. And if God has given you somebody who must be your lifter up, must lift you up, pay attention and nurture that relationship carefully. Thirdly, to build better relationship, repair beneficial but broken relationships. This is a very important one. Sometimes... We destroy relationships that God gave us to benefit us. And sometimes we don't destroy them. It's just that the connection wires are never used over time, and now there's miscommunication. And this is somebody that you know is beneficial in your life, but has become distanced. Either something happened and you are distanced, or you just left it and the relationship just fell apart. If you believe that person is still beneficial to your journey in life, I counsel you, rebuild that relationship. Because there are certain things people can do in your life that no other person can do in your life. No other person can do it in your life. Only that person can do it in your life. And if you say, oh, well... You know, Mukwaya, Mukwaba, you know, you go, God will give me another one. God doesn't do things like that. He doesn't waste resources. He, if he gives you one person and you waste the one person, he's not going to give you another one. He gives you a destiny helper, nurture that relationship. Maybe you lied, you are dishonest, and you broke the relationship. Go and tell the truth, apologize, and try to rebuild trust. All right? So let's build better relationships. And the final thing that I would focus on is live a better life. That's what all of us want in 2024. We want to live a better life. And how do we do that? Three action steps. Number one, improve on my financial stewardship. Improve on my financial stewardship. Money is one of the critical factors that determine the quality of life. It is rightly sung about that money is blood. <laughs> money is not everything, but it is a lot of things. And it influences so much of what goes on in our lives. And we must improve on how we manage money what goes out, and what comes in. Financial stewardship basically is managing well what God gives you and what you give to God. What God gives you and what you give to God. What comes in and what goes out. And each one of us must be masters of that. Sometimes 
a year becomes better, not because you had a financial breakthrough or you received more money, but simply because you managed what you had better. And you realize that the money you thought was not a lot was actually significant if you managed it well. So let's pray for God to give us guidance into financial stewardship so we manage what he has given to us very well. We manage the wealth we receive and don't take for granted where you work and what they pay you. I've said it here. If you are privileged to work in a place where you are paid at the end of the month, every morning, pray for that place that gives you a salary at the end of the month. Because to hustle in life without any guaranteed income is one of the most painful things. To go up and down. Have you seen the people who stand by the roadside? I take note of people. I pay attention to people. When I'm in traffic, I pay attention. I'm watching, and there are certain people I spot in specific areas, and they're carrying something. They're going up and down. Up. If they're wearing a Fitbit bracelet, they, they'll do more than 10,000 steps. They go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I ask myself, considering what they are carrying on their head, even if all of it was bought, what is the margin? And they do it for hours and probably get about 40 CDs, 20 CDs at the end of the day. Now you go to work and you come home and you are paid. And you don't value the place that pays you. Because you think my boss, he earns all the money. He look at one, he's blowing all the money and look at the peanuts he pays us. Anyway, I'll leave that. <laughs> all I'll say is show appreciation if at the end of the month, it may not be all you need, but you get something. That is something. And let's be better stewards of it. Secondly, to improve and to live a better life, we must explore new areas of career interest. New areas of career interest. Is there something more you can do in addition to what you're already doing? Can you take an extra course? Can you learn a new skill? Can you expand your operations? Can you take on new assignments? Because sometimes what you need to do in life to just make your life better, it's not much. One of the things I've, I, I have come to realize is that improvement is always in small quantities. I mean, there may come a time when, boom, your life changes. And we all hear testimonies of people, boom, their life change. But has boom happened to you? <laughs> Once in a while, people will have this radical, dramatic, something that changes their lives in a, in a mind-blowing way. It's once in a while. But the regular human beings like you and I, it is here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line. It just comes, and it is the aggregation, the adding together of the little that makes things big. So take note of the little improvements you have to make. And sometimes it's not a big thing. It's just taking an extra course, taking, learning an extra skill, adding something small to what you do, expanding to a new area. It may not be exponential, but it's incremental. And if you add it together, it will be exponential. And we have to learn to value little things. We have to learn to value little things. It's one of my saying in life, kakra, 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 small, small. That's my, it's, it's, I'm saying it all, it's small, 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 don't, don't, it's, yeah, small, 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 we'll get there. Because that's how we go. If you're walking, it's small, 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 small. 
one step at a time. You've covered 10 miles. One day at a time, we've covered one year. You look at yourself, you are 60 years. You look at yourself, you are 70. How did you get to be 70? I don't know. I was just there one day, one day, one day, then boom, I'm 70. Yeah, but it comes, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, 70. Small, small. Everybody say small, small. Small, small. So don't, 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 don't despise small things. Don't despise small things. You add a little. Add a little. A little 20 cities here. A little 40 cities. A little 50. Somebody gives you uh, some money. He gave you 50. Say, ah, look at it. He's giving me 50 cities. And this man has money like he doesn't even know what to do with it. But is it your money? He gave you 50. <laughs> he gave you 50. Appreciate little things because if you appreciate little things, you will not take anything for granted. And final thing, and then I'm done. Final thing, and then I'm done. Follow better or follow more healthier routines. I'm not going to say run 10 miles every day or walk from here to Kaswa every day. I'm just saying do little things. Eat better, exercise better, rest better. Do regular health checkups. Take your medications, if you're on medication, take it consistently. Take it consistently. Don't say, well, you know, this year I'm throwing all my medicine away. And what will you take? <laughs> I believe I'll be healed if you throw your medicine. Be healed and you won't take the medicine. But whilst you are believing for healing, take the medicine because the medicine also brings healing. The God of signs and wonders is the God of signs as well. The same God. The God of signs and the God of signs and wonders. I believe in both signs and signs and wonders. And if I have to take medication, I will take it. So do your health checkups. If you're on medication, take it. Some of you are on medication, you take it one and then you forget and because you, you went to a prayer meeting, you've gotten energy. <laughs> Throw all your diabetes medication away and then blood sugar psh, spikes. Then now you're chomping the diabetes medicine as if it is food. As if more will make up for the lapse. All I'm saying is Small, small. Take it one step at a time. If you have to do a health checkup, do it. If your doctor tells you to do something, do it. Take, it. take this, do it. Walk by faith. And walk with wisdom as well. All right? And let's improve our lives. Let's do things that will make our lives better qualitatively. So that at the end of the year, you can say, Oh, I think I've managed my life, my health better. My finances are a little better. Uh, last year, maybe I ended with so much uh, as my net income or what I have. But this year, I've, I've gained 10% more. I'm 15% I'm more. It's not up to inflation in Ghana because inflation in Ghana is crazy. But it's still better than going down. All I'm saying is... The big things you want to see in life, they may not happen in one big way. They may just happen because you did some things consistently and over a long period of time. And let's all have the discipline of doing it over and over and over and over. And I believe at the end of 2024, we, can, we should all be able to say, this 2024 is better than 2023. That, that should be our testimony. At the end of 2024, I should be able to say, oh, wow, what a year. It was better than 2023. Why? Because I took these steps and I can see improvement in my life. God bless you all.